The Holy Gospel according to St. John. Glory to you, O Lord. Now before the festival of the Passover, Jesus knew that his hour had come to depart from this world and go to the Father. Having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. The devil had already put it into the heart of Judas, son of Simon Iscariot, to betray him. And during supper, Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands and that he had come from God and was going to God, got up from the table, took off his outer robe and tied a towel around himself. Then he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with the towel that was around him. He came to Simon Peter, who said to him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus answered, you do not know now what I am doing, but later you will understand. Peter said to him, you will never wash my feet. Jesus answered, unless I wash you, you have no share with me. Simon Peter said to him, Lord, not my feet only, but also my hands and my head. Jesus said to him, one who has bathed does not need to wash except for the feet, but is entirely clean. And you are clean, though not all of you. For he knew who was to betray him. For this reason, he said, not all of you are clean. After he had washed their feet, he had put on his robe and had returned to the table. He said to them, Do you know what I have done to you? You call me teacher and Lord, and you are right, for that is what I am. So if I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. For I have set you an example that you also should do as I have done to you. Very truly, I tell you, servants are not greater than their master, nor are messengers greater than the one who sent them. If you know these things, you are blessed if you do them. Now the Son of Man has been glorified and God has been glorified in him. If God has been glorified in him, God will also glorify him in himself and will glorify him at once. Little children... I'm with you only a little longer. You will look for me, and as I said to the Jews, so now I say to you, where I am going, you cannot come. I give you a new commandment, that you love one another. Just as I have loved you, you also should love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples if you have love for one another. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Please be seated. Let us pray. Loving God, empower us to fulfill your command to love. Amen. Friends in Christ, grace you and peace from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks and gave it to his disciples. We begin communion each time with these words. When we gather in this community and remember and partake and join as one, we begin with these striking words in the night in which he was betrayed. When we gather for this meal, there is an intriguing union, betrayal and grace. On Palm Sunday, we heard the Passion reading from the Gospel of Mark. And in the Gospel of Mark, when Jesus tells the disciples he will be betrayed, Mark tells us that the disciples began to be distressed and to say to him one after another, surely not I. Betrayal and grace, surely not I, the disciples say, and we might well give the same response. 
rather than point at someone else and say, it must be him. Rather than pretend that we are not capable of such behavior, we might well join the disciples in wondering at our own capacity to be a part of the brokenness that opposes Jesus. Surely not I. Sadly, we have to admit like that like his disciples who were with Jesus that night, we have betrayed him. And in response, Jesus gives his love. We have betrayed him and Jesus gives himself for you and for me and for the world that opposes him. Betrayal and grace. As the disciples gathered for that last supper, there's betrayal at the table and each one of the disciples wonders if it could be him who betrays. Here at Trinity, we gather at the table. There is betrayal, betrayal of Jesus, betrayal of his ministry, a failure to follow his new command, a betrayal of love. We let him down. We let each other down. Hurts and disappointments, hurts of each other and hurts of our own selves, disappointing each other, disappointing ourselves. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread. Betrayal and grace, knowing who we are, sinners, a broken people in need of forgiveness, knowing that we are a people who have betrayed him, Jesus gives himself for you. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples. Here in the bread and wine, we find that our Lord meets our betrayals with his self-giving love. Jesus, in the night in which he was betrayed, gave his disciples a new commandment. He kneeled before them, washed their feet, and then asked that most interesting of questions. Do you know? It is in many ways a haunting question. Do you know what I have done to you? And we who know the disciples know that they don't know. They never really do understand, do they? But we can, I think, say in their defense, could they have known? Could they ever really know? It seems that finally we might suggest that there really is no knowing, at least not fully and completely. There is no knowing fully and completely what it is that God is up to in Jesus Christ, especially here especially as he gets on his knees and washes his disciples' feet and invites all who follow to do the same, especially there, there on the cross where he gives his life for the world. Do you know what I have done for you? I give you a new commandment that you love one another. Just as I have loved you, you also should love one another. Do you know Jesus asks, and while we may not know, at least not entirely, we do know this. We know that taking and eating, drinking in this gift, we receive more than we can ever know. And we receive all that we could ever need. Do you know, Jesus asks, and really we do know don't we? We know that again and again, Jesus takes you in, forgives, restores, and renews you, and again and again sends you forth. Do you know? You may not know, not fully, but in obedience, you receive the gift given. You take the bread and eat you drink the wine and wonder. Forgiveness of sins, life and salvation given for you and for all the world. Amen.